for those of you out there wanting to get yourselves a parts kit, build your own AK for whatever reason. Maybe you, like me here, you found a really cheap kit. You could throw it, throw it together cheaper than it is to buy an AK. Or maybe you found a rare kit that you can throw together and have a one-of-a-kind AK. Whatever the reason, there's still plenty of reasons to buy AK parts kits. Most of the time, they're not cheaper than building anymore. In some cases, they are, like this. Whatever that reason, I want to go through this video today and show you guys this kit because it's a good example of what to expect. So first of all, what is an AK parts kit? Well, at one time, this was a functional gun. It got imported to the U.S. They took a torch and cut it. Cut the receiver in multiple sections here. Then they cut the barrel in multiple sections, took it all apart, threw it in a box, and well, that's a parts kit. You gotta rebuild it. You don't have a receiver, you don't have a barrel anymore. At one time, you they left the barrels intact in them and you could reuse those. Nowadays, not so much. Well, back in the old days, you, uh, you had to demill all this yourself. And you see this uh, receiver stub here, it's got the rear trunion in it. Uh, under folder stock rear trunion and you've got the receiver stub on it you can see the rivets are still in it here and all through there where someone actually took and grinded down the top here most likely to get the receiver stub out I mean that's the only reason you do it and well I guess they were unsuccessful or something I don't know maybe decided not to go any further with it not really sure but yeah, it used to be you would get the pieces, all different pieces, and you would have to do that. In fact, like the gas block and all would still have a barrel section in. You'd have to press out the sight as well. The trunion, the rear sight base would still be together. Still have the receiver stub, still have a little bit of barrel in it. You'd have to, again, break all apart. Well, most of the time nowadays... The demilling has been done for you, and it looks more like this when you get it. You see, no rivets in this trunion. Pretty much ready to go. Uh, has a bullet guide in it. That is uh, actually something you should check. I'll get more on that in a minute. But, uh, yeah. So, whether it's been demilled or not, that is uh, that's something to look for. The demilling process, it takes a little while. It can be fun, though. Something else to look at is matching numbers on the guns. So you've got a number basically right here on the trunion. You'll have a number on the bolt. Let's see if I can find it here. Oh, here it is right in here. On the carrier, you'll also have a number. Yep, right there. My stuff's really not going to be matching for the most part because, well, I have a mixed match kit here. I have Romanian parts and Hungarian parts. Mm. From the looks of it, most of the gun, besides the rear trunion, the stock, and the furniture is Romanian. The rest are Hungarian, but it doesn't matter. But you look for matching numbers. Again, not necessarily important unless you just want all matching numbers. And then you can, when you order your receiver, you get this number for your receiver too. It's pretty cool to be able to do that, but... Again, that, that's mostly in a collector gun, you know, that rare kit. Not necessarily important for this here, for just throwing one together. Something else to look at is finish wear, okay? So, this trunion, you see there's not much finish wear on it. Looking at this stuff, there's quite a bit of finish wear. So, why would I say they go together? Well, what I'm looking at is you do have some finish wear right here. Do have quite a bit on the top here. You just don't have any where the receiver covers. Of course, it's not going to get any finish wear because the receiver covers it. Again, looking at our carrier, quite a bit of wear. It almost looks like it's been sanded, honestly. It doesn't matter to me so much. See, still more finish wear. Doesn't matter to me so much because what I'm going to do with this gun is I'm going to make it a battlefield pickup. So all the finish wear is just going to kind of it's going to be there. I'm going to try to put some kind of clear finish over it. You see down in there, there's something to look at too. Is looks like that thing had some corrosive ammo, I would say. Yeah, probably had a little bit. So we'll have to clean that out pretty good. But yeah. 
So something else I like to do is the moving parts like this. I like to just check them. It doesn't really matter that much, but I like to just check and make sure everything works. It does. This is going to be really loose. It's supposed to be. Uh, for our stock itself, you see not much finish wear up here. Decent little amount down here on the stock itself. That's pretty common. See, everything folds, everything works. For the most part, this stuff's going to work, but I'm just trying it anyway. It's rare you'll find one that doesn't. Let's just try everything together and make sure. Again, this spring, I like to compress it just to see see how strong it is, and that's still got a good bit of strength to it. This spring is hard for this thing to go out. It really is. Okay, so the spring underneath the sight base will uh, weaken over time. This little spring right here. This one, good and strong. Yep, everything's good there. There's our uh, our sight base. Uh, honestly, I'm going to say that is uh, Hungarian. There's no marks on it besides the two. I'm going to go ahead and say Hungarian. But yeah, let me check everything out. You'll have your small parts and everything. This is all for the stock for the most part. I might, might be one or two other things in here. No, pretty much everything for the stock itself, all the hardware. Uh, this little bag here has got our smaller things in it. Two axis pins. Uh, we got a barrel pin, some springs, all our pins for our, uh, for our barrel components, all that in here. Now, usually when you buy a parts kit, it'll have three axis pins and you'll also have an auto sear. This one doesn't. Again, because this one was put together by someone else, uh, an individual. So I assume they just threw that stuff away. I would have done the same. For the most part actually the uh rate reducer thing that goes right here that's another part it comes in the auto parts yeah i would have saved it just because i like to make spacers out of them they work pretty good for that but not a big deal looking at this thing yeah the hammer's seen a little bit of use you see it there so yeah i mean all in all this is a good parts kit what you'd expect so what do you need to turn this parts kit into an AK again? Well, first you need a receiver. The receiver's got to match the stock you have. The rear trunnion, Lou, if I drop it, it's got to match that rear trunnion. They have to match up. And different countries have different styles. Most of the time they'll work with a little bit of modification, but it's good to have the right one. So whatever rear stock style you got, you want that. The rest, I mean, you want AK, AK-47, AK-74 style, whatever. But yeah, receiver, you'll need a set of rivets. Rivets, I get mine from AK Builder, always have. Great rivet set. Just get the type you need. Again, far and under folder. This one, AK Builder rivet, AKS under folder style. Yeah. You need an AKM style, you get an AKM style. You need a Yugo style, you get a Yugo style. And last but not least, you need a barrel. The barrel's got to match whatever style you have. AKM style, AK-74 style, whatever. This is an AKM barrel. Pretty bare bone, basic. 4762. And there we are. Anyway, that's parts kits. Thanks for watching, everyone.